All right, guys, we got a Coleman BT200X from a buddy of mine at work. Says it was crashed, tipped over in the mud, and ever since then now, whenever he runs it, it goes full throttle, or it wants to go right away. So, um, my first guess is, before we even start it up, let's take it the link. Let's look at the linkages and make sure everything looks okay, and then let's fire it up and see what we see. All right, so there's moving the throttle, and you can see that throttle cable is getting pulled back. The one thing I am thinking is maybe something with the. Maybe something when the governor is not quite right, which I think this bracket goes to the governor arm. Um, let's try firing up and see what she does. Just as a safety measure, I think we'll put that rear tire up on block. In case this wants to go. All right, kill switch is off. Fuel is on. Let's put choke on. Back tire is spinning freely. Let's try it out. away from that governor arm which is under there it wants to it wants to idle nicely when I let go of it it's pulling on that governor arm making that engine want to rev up and then what else I see when I pull on this throttle It doesn't really want to rev up at all. Okay, so if you couldn't hear me with the engine running, I don't know how that's going to come out, but you could tell it was idling high. For it wanted to, it wanted to spin the wheels when we first started it. But what I noticed is if you take this is the linkage, if you can see it from that angle, to the carburetor from the governor that's probably under this fuel tank that um if you take that pressure off of that governor it does want to idle and then i also noticed when you give it throttle it wasn't revving up at all either so that makes me think that some linkages got messed up now whether that happened when he crashed it or if he did get in here and, and mess with some things if that got messed up so let's uh let's take away some of this stuff let's take away the air cleaner probably pop off the fuel tank and see what we got going on for linkage, linkage and see if we can figure that out. Take this air cleaner off. Cleaner looks 
Looks like it's starting to fall apart in there. Oops. Um. Alright, so I got you staring down the barrel of the carburetor here. Don't worry about this. This front plate here is your choke. We're not worried about that. That plate back there is your throttle. And you can tell that it's open. Probably halfway open right now. And right now, um, I got that throttle full open on the mini bike. And now, um, now there's no throttle. Full throttle, no throttle. And you can tell that that plate's not even moving and you can see this linkage move up here when I give it oh, let me back you up a little bit more here's the linkage up here there's full throttle no throttle full throttle no throttle so it's moving linkages up here but I just don't think it's hooked up correctly alright to get a better view of the linkages underneath the gas tank we're gonna want to take the gas tank off which looks like it's mounted in the front by two nuts that one is already missing let's take this one off okay now on the back side there's two different bolts there's one there and there I'm not quite sure what one holds that tank on there but we're going to we're going to take a guess and go with this one maybe maybe we got to take that one off too wonder if we can just move this out of the way for now, I really don't. That fuel line runs all underneath this linkage. I'd rather, well, what do you think? Pull it off? I think we gotta pull it off. Okay, so here's a better view at all the linkage. This is the governor arm that I'm talking about. And what that'll do is this, there's a, I guess you can call it a wheel with spinning weights inside of the engine. That's your governor. And that'll make your engine slow down when it gets above a certain speed. So that's why you see a lot of people removing their governors so they can just run their engines at full RPMs, however those RPMs will go, which is cool, but you can also wreck your engine if you remove that but I don't know if that's what this guy wants to do but you can tell if I go I'm pulling on a throttle now and then I release it that governor arm is not pulling it back closed which part of the reason why is because it's not running it's got to be running to pull back on that right um so I have a couple theories one theory is that this throttle linkage is all the way it should be it's just a garbage setup. The second theory is that when this mini bike was crashed, if it was, if it looks like there was dirt and stuff up here, if that was stuck in a way that that governor was held down and going full throttle, that could have destroyed the governor that's inside this, um, this block. And that's why it's not returning like we should. If those if there's not weights on there spinning, that's not pulling this arm back, closing off our throttle. Um, I want to hook the gas tank back up and uh, run it like this so I can watch this and play with the throttle a little bit and see if that if we can kind of diagnose that more watching it run like this. <clears throat> All right, 
So I rigged the gas station up on top with painter's tape just to keep it there. And uh, just ran a different fuel line for now because I don't really want to pull this fuel line out because it's kind of threaded in there. But this is going to give us a better glimpse at what this governor arm is doing. So let's fire it up see what happens. So what did we observe? We observed that when the engine is running, this governor isn't pulling back enough to let the engine idle. There's always this constant tension on here. And I don't know, the spring looks kind of stretched out already if it came like the factory like that, or if that's the, the governor inside of here, if that swung apart, and those either one weight fell off or both weights fell off if that is what's causing this not to return to idle so another thing I'm noticing too when this engine runs and I'll start it up for you to hear it again is that there's a lot of popping going on and I'm thinking I'm thinking it might be a valve issue as well Okay, so that just told me something right there, that when I turned the choke on, then it revved up. So it's, it's running way too rich, and that's probably this, again, this governor arm. See, that wouldn't make sense. The governor arm, maybe we have a, the float in the carburetor is stuck. If it did get tipped over in a crash, and that float valve is stuck and it's just dumping gas in there that would explain it running really rich like that so we gotta make a call about the governor if we're gonna dig in there and see if that's wrecked this linkage looks pretty shady and we gotta do the carburetor so we gotta work cut out for us okay so I just talked to the owner and he wants to delete the governor anyway so that's gonna give us Another reason to go in there and see what that looks like inside the engine. So, uh, we could probably get away with not taking the engine off and just taking the, the clutch off and just taking the side cover off here. But I think to make it easier, we'll we'll pull the old engine off and put it up on the bench. And I got this from the store. That's what I was after, the master link. Let's see if we can pop this off here. Chains quite tight. I think the other side was supposed to have a lock nut like this one. If that rattled off or what. Well, it's not. <laughs> 
it's not loosening because as you can see, those threads are boogered, so no matter how much you spin this nut, it doesn't track down them. So it is loose enough here that if I take off the axle bolt, I think we can just pop this. Um, I don't know if you want to call it a banjo setup or whatever, but we can pop that off and get tension off of the belt that way. Okay, this is loose enough now. We should be able to take this master link off. I've actually never seen these before. It's obviously a clutch, but it's like a torque converter hybrid. It's, it allows you to gear it even more, your, your gear ratio down, so that's pretty cool. Oh, I was hoping to be able to slide that out without taking this chain off. Oh. Nope, not gonna be able to. Okay, let's take off that master link too. So we don't lose anything, I'm just gonna quick connect this back together. What does that bar say? Yeah. What bar are you looking at? The bar on the motorcycle. The steering wheel on the motorcycle. Oh, it says Pro Taper? I think that must be the um, brand. Yeah, must be. Let's, before we unbolt the motor, let's make sure we got everything else unhooked. I think these went up front to lights, which aren't there anymore. This probably is a kill, this goes up to the kill switch. And this comes back, this was the ground that was on the fuel tank. That that kill switch grounds to. But it looks like it's just the throttle here. Which that whole throttle setup now with that governor got gone, we're gonna have to change. Okay, we can take off our temporary fuel system. I got it pinched off with the channel locks there. Okay, these four engine mount bolts are 10 millimeter on the bottom and 12 on top. All right, pull her out. Whoa! Whoa! That thing is pull ugly. Out. So what we're after is the the governor here, which. You can't just take the governor arm off and leave the the weights and the gear in there because if you're going to spin this way past what it's designed for, that's going to fly apart and cause damage inside. So. Oil's dirty, but 
I don't see any sh big shavings or anything like that that could be indicative of that governor blowing apart. So who knows what we'll see here. All right, what are we gonna see, Max? Um, We're gonna see a governor blown up? Probably not, I'm starting to, oh, that's not a flathead. All right. So that's the governor there. You see this arm comes down and that's what pushes on the governor. And when it spins, see there's a gear there that runs off of the camshaft. When that spins, these weights fly out and allow that arm to push, push on it. And that's what's controlling your throttle. Okay, before this all falls out, let's take out our, that's your cam. Those are your tappets that ride on the cam. And these are your, your push rods. Keep all that together. Wonder if we can get all that out without taking the without taking the crank apart. Let's start up top and take the governor arm off. Let's take that. Springs off. We're gonna have to take that crank out, that arm won't drop down. Okay, to get that governor arm out, we are gonna have to pull the crankshaft out. That is in the way. So, take this cover off. Looks like, is it 10 mil? No, uh, eight. Eight millimeter. So we don't lose that when we pull it, pull it through. That should be all what we need to do on this side. I just gotta loosen those those wrist bolts in there that hold the connecting rod on. Let's see if I can get you at a better angle here. I'm guessing those are probably those might be ten mil. Get this rotated in a good position before we take this off. Let's see if we can get some. Is that gonna be the best spot, I wonder? Bobby, probably right there. Now we are going to have to look up those torque specs. I think this is this engine is very comparable to a, a Predator, Honda Predator. I think they all call them Honda clones. There's a million out there now that are just like this style. They're actually better than the, the Briggs because they got 
actual roller bearings on the on the cover side here. Um, there's a lot of Briggs engines that just use a, a brass uh, bushing, so bearing is better than bushing in that case. So remember when we took this off, that oil dipper points down. I don't think you can assemble it the other way. There's your connecting rod. Now if we rotate this and push that piston back up. So this arm can come out, what we'll do is we'll drill and tap the hole that this went through the casing and put a bolt in there. And there's the parts, the plastic piece to it, it probably is a clip in there or something that's holding it on. Let's see if I can show you real quick before I do it. Focus. Focus. Okay. So, further down in that shaft, yeah, you can see it. That ring right there. I'm going to see if I can spread that apart. So that will slide off. Need a smaller flathead? Okay, so after... Okay, so after farting around with that ring for a while, I think we got it off of the, there it is. That was the ring that's holding that, that guy on. So now that whole assembly should just slide out. We don't really want to, here we go. We don't want to mess with that post at all because otherwise we'd have to drill and tap that hole and plug it with a screw. So we can leave that just like that because that's gonna that's not gonna interfere with the engine at all. Um, we'll only have to drill and tap and plug this hole up on top here where that arm was sticking through. Okay, so I found that a 5 16 by 18 threads per inch is going to be the best fit for that hole and this is probably three quarters of an inch long so that thread uses a quarter inch hole so let's make sure we have that we're obviously doing this before we reassemble it because we're going to want to get all the shavings out of the bottom you really can't see that well, can you? Let me get you readjusted. That tap's bottomed out. It's poking out the bottom now, so it should be far enough for what we want to do. sure our surface is nice, nice and flat. There, that's better. Okay. I don't want to get that black gasket on the top of the bolt. There's no really pretty way of doing that and then also I'm going to put some thread lock around it too so it doesn't vibrate out which I don't think it would with that gasket material sweet
Clean it up a little bit. Good. Okay, now we want to carefully clean out all these shavings. We don't want to leave any of that behind. All right, I'm going to use Lubriplate, 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 number five grease as an assembly grease. Let's get the, the crankshaft where that goes into the seal and also the, the journal here where that Connecting rod's gonna go on. Beat that through. There we go. We had to swing it in from the top side. I was trying to swing it up through the bottom. Oh, put a little bit of assembly lube on here. Remember our oil dipper needs to go towards the bottom. Can you see that? I did go inside and print the torque specs to these. It might be a little tricky getting a torque wrench in there, but I think we can do it. Okay, those get torqued to nine foot pounds, which is about oh, 110 inch pounds. Click. Click. Get that bottom one one more time. Click. All right. Alright, we'll make sure we get assembly lube on the tappets as well. And that'll help hold them up in those. You don't need a lot of it, just a, a film of it. That helps hold them up there. Get some on our, our lobes. as well. All right, let's uh -oh. prep our cover. This gasket's not in bad shape. What do you think? Do we reuse it? Or do we put silicone on here? silicone on it. Alright, let's make sure this face is clean. Okay, we got assembly lube on the crankshaft. This is set up a little bit so we're ready to slap it on there. Ugga dugga this thing down. 
We're just gonna get them snugged up there and then we'll torque them. What does that mean? Um, it's, you have a special wrench, Caroline, that there's a standard that you can tighten things to. Look up those torque specs. Okay, torque specs are 17 foot pounds. What? Is that a kitty cat? <laughs> it is really meowing. Okay, I can tell it appears that's that not that's it's not all the way seated, but it, it actually is. I can tell it's more time. All right, let's get these push rods back in here. The tappets. Okay. I do believe these valve clearances are six thousandths and eight thousandths. So let's let's double check that. Okay, so it is six thousandths for intake. There's your intake and eight thousandths for for your exhaust. Put the the breather back in here. Careful not to punch a hole in it. There we go. All right, now is a good time to figure out our our linkage. What we want to do for our linkage. And I'm thinking, yeah, we're going to want this cover off. See how we want to do this. So this, this 
get these old springs off that were on here. We don't need that to go to the governor anymore. That was actually stuck behind, <laughs> behind the cover there. Alright, so we need to figure out some springs and some linkage. To where if this is our new throttle, that's idle. It's full throttle. Let's do some thinking here and see what we can come up with. there's a tab underneath here all right let's bend that up hey guys I want to show you what we ended up with so I used that existing um, bracket that used to go to the governor arm that was over here and I uh, put a bend in it and another bend and I fished it through this bottom eyelet on this cover here and I left that end the same that goes to the butterfly. And then we picked up this small spring from the hardware store. So now you can see the, the butterfly valve. That's idle. That's full throttle. So it wasn't too bad to figure out. Uh, I know they sell kits online and stuff, but really you can, I think this was a dollar sixty-five that spring. And we reuse the existing linkage there, so it should be good to go. All right, let's get our spark plug back in. Let's get our air cleaner back on. Yeah, check this out. that look? Does that look right to you? Now you gotta take my word for it. I did not flip this around. This has been the same. That gasket was on upside down. See how that hole is up top here? That might have been an issue because that was blocking that off. Okay. If my buddy at work is watching this, were you in the carburetor? <laughs> okay, I won't bring it up anymore. Oh. Caroline? Yes? You need to help me remember that I have not put an oil in this engine yet. Um, so don't get all excited, Dad, and fire this thing up. When it doesn't have gas it? in it. Well, I'll make sure it has gas. It's just remembering the oil might be the might be a problem. It won't be a problem. Okay, I think we're ready to get this back mounted on the mini bike. Let's make sure we have a clean surface. Now there was one engine mounting bolt that was missing, but I was able to scrounge something up that'll work, so.
Okay, so I'm thinking before we get too far and hook everything up, we should put some. Oh, Caroline, what do you need to remind me of? To add oil. Yes. Thinking we'll add some oil. Put the fuel on and run it before we go through the work of hooking everything up that we know we're good. So let's get some oil in here. Oh, good gracious, Papa. So this makes me think of earlier when we were trying to diagnose this thing. Remember how when we would it'd be the choke. When we would choke it, that the revs would skyrocket. That tells me that that gasket that was in front that was blocking that hole, that was that's probably the idle port maybe. I don't know, what do you guys think? I said that's it. <laughs> when I was trying to hook up that throttle cable, I noticed that this throttle is super crunchy. You can hear it. It doesn't want to move freely. Hmm. I wonder if something got bound up in here. Oh yeah, it looks like the cable's not in the track. Yeah, it's not in the track. See that cable's right there. I think it's supposed to be inside that that ring. One thing after another, Caroline. Mm -hmm, Papa, you're finding lots of little mistakes, and you thought it was one big mistake. <laughs> I think this mini bike's sweet. I can't wait to get it running so we can toot it around a little bit. But it's not ours. You're right, it's not ours, is it, honey? But, oh, Papa, it's so exciting to make it ours. Like making videos? Weird. How that thing come out of the track like that? Did you find that screw, honey? Pull the side, so it's not slack. Alright, now that the throttle's freed up, let's try this again. Yeah, that moves much smoother. Let's feed this through here. That's right, right over there. Okay. Okay. Where are you? Take it down. Okay. That's tight. Let's give it throttle. Throttle. Oh, it kind of hangs up. Hmm. I almost think it's not very much in line. I want to move this cable to the other side. Okay. Should we hook up some gas to it? Sure, we get our. This is our kill switch. This is from the engine going up to the kill switch. There you go. 
And remember, this is your ground that that ground swap, ground kill switch grounds out to. So we'll just have to make sure when we want to kill it, we'll just have to kill the kill switch and ground it. So. Those closed. To do choke on to start. Kill switch, put the grounds out on. Let's try it. Alright, guys, this is where I screwed up. That witness mark on the camshaft needs to line up with the witness mark on the crankshaft. So I screwed the timing up, totally forgot to match those up when I reassembled it. So here we are with the engine back on the bench. I'm hoping I can pull that camshaft out without, without having the valve, the push rods come down. So let me position the engine where where that witness mark is going to be in a good spot. There it is. There it is, folks. All right. Round two. Choke on. Kill switch off. Ground's not even connected. Doesn't matter. Make sure it's not touching anything. Fuel is on. Temporary tanks hooked up. Let's try it out. So what I'm noticing is that it only really runs good and revs to a high RPM when the choke is on. So if I turn the choke off, it wants to die. And then when I give it, when I give it full throttle, when I give it full throttle without the choke on, it doesn't want to run right. With the choke on, when the choke on, it'll idle right, it'll rev up high. So with the choke on, it'll idle correctly and it'll rev up correctly. So that tells me that we got a jet clogged up or something's up with the carburetor. So, But governor's gone and we can go much more faster. Alright, that's where we're at with the Coleman Mini Bike. We ended up taking the governor out, making up some linkage so the carburetor will work without the governor arm there. And uh, what else? The carburetor, we found that gasket was on upside down, blocking one of those ports. And we know now that it will run good with the choke on, but if you take the choke off, it won't rev up good and it won't idle good. So I think we need to get into that carburetor and figure out what's going on. Give it a good cleaning. It might just be the jets are dirty and certain um, idle jets or high jets aren't working right. But once that's all set, we can button it all up, put your clutch back on. Uh, the clutch torque converter, whatever that thing is on these Coleman bikes. Mount the gas tank on properly, put everything back together and put the chain on and ship it out. So, Hey, if you're enjoying this, uh, leave a like, Sus consider subscribing. I got tons of videos where we just hang out in the shop and work on things. So, thanks for watching.